This is hard. Is that, is that good? Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? So notice we're always going to the right for all of these. Like this one, I went to the right. This one will go to the right. This one will go to the right as well. Okay. Since that's the case, we know that our denominator will always be positive. For example, in this one, it went to the right three. In this one, one, two, three, four. All right. All we've got to do is figure out how far up or down it goes. Well, since we're going to the right, we'd go from this point down to this one, right? Since it's going downward, we're going to go down, it's negative. All right. Well, how far down does it go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven lines. All right. So this slope is negative seven thirds. Some of you want to write this as a mixed number, go ahead and receive your own destruction. All right, this one as well. Notice it's going to go down and then to the right. It goes down one, two, three, down, three, bam. All right, so you guys are looking at this and really, really confused, some of you, on if it's negative or not, all right? This is what you're going to do. So you notice it gives you a point here and it gives you a point there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start as far as I can to the left, see? This is as far to the left as I can go. I'm going to go to the right until I run into my first point, okay? There it is, my first point, as I move to the right. Now, to get to the next point, do I go up or down? Well, this is the next point. I'm going to have to go down. Is this making sense yet? Yes, down is negative, and then I count. How far down did I go? Seven. Why don't you go to the right or down? Uh, I, usually, I usually always like to go oh, up or down makes first. Oh, sense now. I get it. And it keeps it in order, so you do the top and then bottom. Can I do the third one? Hmm? Can I do the third one? Like the bottom part where you just go up. Oh. Well, I went down. Oh. What? Well, yeah, if you do that, though, then you're not always going to the right. That's why, that's why, Seth, I'm keeping this consistent with I'm always going to the right because it tells me that my denominator is always positive. Okay? And then, yes, we did go to the right three on this one for a slopage of negative seven-thirds. So I am going to skip that part. Just know that uh, this whole this whole stuff right here, it's kind of like garbage. Um, you can use it if you really want to. Look at it. Think about it. All right. Let it cycle through your brain many many times, and hopefully you will dream about it, and then you will understand it with all of your heart, and you will rejoice. Uh, in reality, though, just know that uh, at a graph like this, there's only two things you need. Two things, okay? You need to find two things. The first thing is the slopage. Okay? If you can find the slopage, you're doing pretty good. The second thing is the y-intercept. Okay. Now, uh, does, does anyone have any questions on finding slope? Because that's what the last lesson was all about, finding slopage on a graph and in a table and kind of in an equation. Describe for me what the y-intercept is by raising your hand and being called on. Y-intercept. There is a poster with it. Listen, guys, uh, the y-intercept is just where the line crosses the y-axis. So is the y-axis this up and down axi, or is it this horizontal down, left and right axi? Uh, very good. It's this up and down one, okay? This are our y-axi. Y. This is x. Okay, so if I were to make this line 
right here. All right. And let's say we wanted to know the y-intercept. Maybe it was right here. What would the y-intercept for this line be? Three. Three. Okay. So you could say your y-intercept is three. You would find your slope, whatever it is, m. And now you can write an equation. All right? We'll go over how uh, to do that in just a second. This slope-intercept form of a line is the best thing in math. And by the best, I mean just the most common, all right? Uh, you're going to be using this slope-intercept form stuff until you graduate from college. And as long as the government thinks it's important for you to know, okay? So, if we look at this, just know you start every slope-intercept form equation. This is an equation, okay? You write y equals, I'm going to put our x over here, and then we're going to plus, okay? These four things, y equals x plus, you can write that in all the time. Always. You can always write that in for all slope-intercept form of the line, okay? In fact, let's just make it three things. y equals x. But give yourself some space here, okay? I did do this on purpose. There's some space. Yes? Is y and x the y intercept and x intercept? No, it is not. It is just uh, general values of y and x. They're variables. So they, they can change, Christian. Okay? You don't fully have to understand that right now. All right? So, as it turns out, we put the slope right up in here. Slopage. So when you find your slope, you just plug it in. Just replace this whole thing with whatever that number is. Sometimes it's a fraction. That's great. All right? Now what you're going to do is you're going to add this to whatever the y-intercept is. So remember on this last example, we found the y-intercept was 3. So I could just replace this whole thing with a positive 3. But we would still have to find the slope on that, okay? We'll do some more examples. After you, So in other words, okay, this is so important for you guys to know because... If you don't, then you're going to struggle a lot. What are the two things you need for slope-intercept form of a line? Origin. No. Nope. A straight line. Slope. <laughs> and the y-intercept. And the y-intercept. Does, does that make sense why we call it slope-intercept? Yeah, because the slope intercept. Because the first thing you need is slope. The second thing you need is the y-intercept. Do you ever need the x-intercept? Uh, yes, but not today. And kind of no at the same time. All right. This is just an example. Y equals minus y minus two x equals eight. K. Okay? Remember, our slope-intercept form of a line is y equals slopage times x plus your y-intercept. Okay. So all we're going to do is manipulate this equation until it says y equals. So to do that, notice I've got y minus 2x. So you've got to get y alone. Yes, very good, Christian. The biggest problem is this. You've got minus 2x with, on the same side as y. So this kind of works the same way as the switch and stay game. You could draw a line through the equal sign and make y's on one side and then all other garbage on the other side. But not necessarily. This is not necessarily what you have to do. Uh, notice some of you use the old traditional way where you just add 2x here. We'll add 2x here, and that's a positive 8. Bam, that gives me, this This stuff goes away, okay? Goner. Oh, what, what, what? Hold on. So notice up here, since we got rid of all this garbage, all we're left with is y equals, and then I'm going to start with this 2x, and then it's a positive 8. Bam, done. Now that this is in slope-intercept form, what is my slope? How old is this? Slope. What is my slope? Two. Do not put the x. The x is a variable. Yeah, the x is just part of the equation. Okay, the slope is just a number. The y-intercept is what? It's eight. All right, now this is the tricky thing with y-intercept. It's a, it's a point. No. 
So it would be 0, 8. Very good, Christian. Okay. If on a test it does not look like this, it's wrong. You're going to lose points. So make sure that you put it as a point, not as just a number. Slope is a number. Okay. All right, here's another good one. Notice it says write the equation. We're going to write this equation in slope-intercept form. This one. So the equation, we need all. that's all we're going to do for this one. Is just all we're writing is writing the equation. Christian? Can I tell the equation? Well, let me just get it started, and then I'll have you finish, okay? Remember, since we're writing the equation, just start automatically. Y equals, give yourself some space, and then write the X. Plus. Okay? You don't even need the plus because... And the reason I, I leave the plus off is because if the y-intercept is negative, then it's minus. Okay. So we just put what, whatever it is, positive or negative, in front, okay? All right, Christian, so what is it? Y equals one-half x plus x. Bam. Done, okay? Right, notice, one-half is your slope, and six is your y-intercept. It's a positive Positive 6, okay? This is the equation. Done. Okay, here is uh, another uh, example. Except for in this one, they give you the equation. All you've got to do is state what the slope and the y-intercept is. Listen, folks, this is not even math. All you do is identifying stuff. Bam. There's our slopage. Y-intercept, negative 4. I noticed the book wrote this wrong. What should the y-intercept be written as? A point. Zero, negative four. Zero. Now that would get you full credit. Zero. Write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form. It tells you the slope. Uh-oh. Tells you the slope and the y-intercept. So, again, we just start this as usual. y equals something x. It told us the slope is negative 3, and the y-intercept is negative 4. Done. Yes, Grant? It's always written as 0, and then whatever you find the y-intercept to be. This is where the number is, okay? A, B, and C, all you're doing is saying what the slope is and the y-intercept. Okay, let's look at the equation right here. And all we want to do is figure out what the slope is and the y-intercept. No, up, beep, pop, oh, no, up. All right, Tate is going to tell us very loudly and in a high-pitched voice how to find the slope in the equation, please. You look at the number before x. That wasn't very high. I didn't want you look to at the That's the only way it will catch your voice. Do it. You can do it or not. Oh, I did. All we're going to do is look. Here's the x. I found it. What's the number in front of x? Five. Negative five. What? Oh, my bad. Okay. How do we find the y-intercept? Three. Look at the number after x. It's so a positive oh, three. This is so easy. Done. Yes, the actually that's a good point. The coefficient is the slope. The coefficient of x. Alright. Alright, who will tell us what the slope is for B, please? Olivia. One fourth. See? Why is it one fourth, guys? Because it's the number before x. Very good. What is the y-intercept? Negative six. Cooper. Negative six. Very good. What's the slope? Sorry, let's start with the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept for c? Wait, what? Holly. It are five. Okay. Notice you do still need to write these as points, though, okay? What is the slope for C? Nope. Grant? Negative one. Negative one. one. All right. Uh, notice, again, the book is writing the y-intercepts, not as points. 
jerks. All right, here's another one. Uh, notice, now it's going to give you a graph, and you must find the slope and the y-intercept from the graph, okay? So you gotta find the slope. It's going to be a fraction, and then you gotta find your y-intercept just by looking at where it crosses. That's it. All right, so let's look at D. Write an equation in slope-intercept form from this graph, okay? First thing we need is slopage. All right, so if I look at this, it gives me a point right here and a point right up in here, okay? So I am going right. So am I going up and down? Up or up, down? Up. Up, right? So I know that my slope is positive, and I'm going to go up to this line. So I go one, two, three, four, five, up. And then I'm going to go to the right, one, two, three. So I'm already that far. I can write my equation y equals something x. Uh, notice slope goes in front of x, so what is my slope? Five thirds. Five thirds. Very good. And then all I've got to do is find the y-intercept. Well, this is zero. I'm looking at my up and down line right here. And it goes one, two, it's down to negative two. Bam. There's your equation. Okay, write an equation of a, of a line in slope-intercept form. Again, it tells you the slope and the y-intercept, okay? So I'm going to start with y equals something x. Well, it's the slope, x. Well, it's three-fourths. And then my y-intercept here, negative three, so I write negative three, done. No, we're almost done. All right, notice it gives you the answers here as well, so hopefully that is helpful you. All right, uh, just one last thing with this. It will ask you to interpret the y-intercept. It's just the starting point, all right? So, like this one. Oh, boy, you got to graph this stinking thing. Okay, well, let's graph it. So, I got another line right in here. Yeah. That's my y-axi, and this is my x-axi. X and y. Well, it says y equals 5x plus 20, so what I'm going to do is this will be 10, 20, okay? There's 10 and 20. Huh? Uh, because this one is talking about dollars, and so we're not going to need to go into the negatives, okay? Okay, so let's look at this. So 20 is this line right here. Yeah. That's 10, 30, 40, 50, 60, yes. and so forth, okay? So as I start this graph, we always start with the y-intercept. What is the y-intercept of this equation? The y-intercept. The slope is 5. The y-intercept is 20, which is right in here, okay? Now what you can do is you're going to go up 5. Notice each line represents 5. And then I just count these as one. So one, there's three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So just gonna go up. There's our next point, the next one, and the next, and the next, and the next, and so forth. Here's our graph. Good old graphage. Okay. Now that I have these points, I can draw my line all the way through. Shazam! Shazam! I nailed it. I nailed it, and I suppose I should label my axi as well. Uh, it's $5 per shirt. All right. Uh, notice we do have to interpret the y-intercept. Look, if we read the problem, it will tell us. The y-intercept is 0, 20. So all we got to do is find where it says 20. Well, there it is, $20 for the design. That's my interpretation. Hey, just notice on this one, it told you what x represents. x is miles. So just label that right away, miles. All right. This is a taxi fare, which you would do in dollars. So 
those dollars over here. All right, well, there's your graph. Uh, it was already on there, guys. Uh, all you've got to do is notice that the y-intercept, or, well, I already graphed the y-intercept, but the slope here is 0.5. So it's not. So you're going to go up a half, half a box, and then to the right one, okay, because it is 0.5 over 1. So you go up a half and to the right one, which is why we get this next point and the next one and the next and so forth. Oh, so which one's the actual point then? All of them are. So but this point right here is the y-intercept, okay? Yeah, but. So now we've got to interpret these. So notice it starts at 350. So what you'd say is it automatically is going to start at 350, okay? It costs 350 just to climb into the cap and climb out, all right? After that, it's 50 cents for every mile. Because notice when we wrote the slope, it's y over x. Well, y is represented by dollars. X is represented by miles. It's a pretty easy way to interpret it, OK? What if it's negative? Oh. All right, there you go. Here's, here's how the book wrote it. Fun. All right, do one and two.